Robin is a world champion eco challenge adventure racer, a former corporate sales expert, a full time San Diego firefighter, a 10 time Iron Man triathlete, a New York Times best selling author, a three times Guinness World Record distance paddler, and a proud owner of two bionic metal hips. Robin's a badass. Now, I could stand up here and go on and on, but Robin and her teammates have a resume so long with all of their accomplishments that I think it's easier to just watch her in action. Let's watch this. NBC Sports presents the 2006 Ford Ironman World Championship. The competitors here range from professional triathletes to lawyers to doctors and many teachers. But there's only one adventure racer who happens to be a female firefighter. I'm not a triathlete. I'm a Rottweiler competing with, with a bunch of greyhounds. Robin Benacasa has started and finished this race three times before. Iron Man taught me how to be hard, how to be just mentally hard and to suffer. And I took that and brought it to adventure racing. And I'm spent. They have traveled here from every corner of the world. For 10 nonstop days and nights, they must hike, mountain climb, paddle, ride, and race through some of the most captivating yet dangerous terrain in one of the last great wilderness areas on Earth. Last summer in the leech-infested jungles of Borneo, Robin's team brought home the Eco Challenge Championship. We have the uh, Eco Challenge winners. They are on the roof right now. That's uh, Ian, Robin, Mike, and Isaac. How you doing, guys? And I want to ask you guys, what were the, the toughest part? It was just so mentally hard. I remember one night in particular, we were laying on the jungle floor with not only bugs crawling around beneath us, but leeches falling from the trees onto us like rain. Oh, my ping, God. Ping, 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 all over us. Oh, my God. This is the world's toughest adventure race. Uh, we're going to explore some of the coolest places on Earth, but most importantly, we're going to explore why winners win and why Veritas and all of your customers and why you are going to continue to win year in and year out, no matter how difficult the challenge or how tough the climb, and especially in those times when change is the only thing that stays the same. And I want to share it with you guys today in the most fun way I can, and that's using some examples and stories from my super ludicrous sport of adventure racing. Has anybody here ever heard of adventure racing, just out of curiosity, before like one minute ago? <laughs> Yay, I saw three hands, yay. It's actually a lot um, per normal. Usually I get like the half a hand and they turn to their buddy and go, oh no, that's the amazing race. I've never heard of this race. It's a sport that was invented by a crazy, awesome Frenchman and popularized around the world by a little known guy named Mark Burnett, who started Survivor. And it involves small teams of men, men and women. You have to have one man and one woman on each team. And the race director will ask you to meet in the middle of the most remote place they can find on Earth and each team a set of maps and compasses and rules and say, ready, set, go. See you guys in 600 to 1,000 miles. Whichever team gets their first wins. And it's all non-motorized transportation, kayaking, mountain biking, whitewater rafting, mountaineering, and the clock never stops. So if you sleep and when you sleep is all part of your team strategy. So the winning teams will get about an hour and a half of sleep every 24 hours or so. But as if the physical part isn't hard enough, here's the real kicker. Everybody on the team has to remain within 50 yards of each other from start to finish. I mean, there's not that many people in our families that we want to spend that kind of special time with, right? And if you cross the finish line without even one teammate, your entire team is disqualified. So based on the rules of this ludicrous extreme sport and the fact that we couldn't achieve individual success without everyone on the team succeeding, which probably sounds very familiar, right? Most important thing that we learned out there is zero to do with sports. The most important thing that we learned out there is something that you guys learn out there, especially you guys in the field as well, every single day, and that is that the secret to long-term success is to play less as an individual and more as a team. As a coach, you play not your 11 best, but your best 11. So does anybody out there want to be an adventure racer when they grow up now, after that charming description, <laughs> the video with the leeches? No, you're all too smart. 
and you're building an information management galaxy. You have things to do. But guess what? Every single day, according to Fast Company Magazine, who actually inspired this presentation when they featured our team in an article called Extreme Teamwork for Business, every successful business person is in an adventure race every single day of their lives. Right? Small teams of men and women, endless series of checkpoints, nearly impossible goal, extreme time pressures, constantly changing industry conditions, and with the goal of doing it better than anybody else in the world. Hi, Team Veritas Adventure Racers. Yeah, this is not a sprint, baby. This is an endurance race, right? Yeah, if you want to go fast, you can go alone. If you want to go far, you got to go together. Yeah, so why do winners win? And how do we continue to win for Veritas and your customers every single day? Well, the first reason? is that all of you have a hell of a lot of courage. What do great winners know about courage? Well, great winners have a core belief every single day that they were meant to be successful. And they also have that higher sense of purpose, their why. What is your why? Maybe it's about rocking the red. No, maybe it's something bigger than yourself, showing your clients and customers who you are as Veritas. And they also have guts from a couple different perspectives. That going the distance, quietly persevering, unwavering in your patience and faith, but then taking calculated risks and shattering the norm. But I'll tell you one thing we learned for sure about courage in these crazy adventure races. By definition, courage starts when the fun stops. I, or as one of my teammates so eloquently put it, we don't get to find out if we're really courageous until this race starts sucking. I mean, in our case, you know, we're standing at the start line, the sun is out, we're high-fiving each other, we're wearing matching outfits, we're all cool, we're adventure racers. Then about, you know, 12 hours later, there's sideways hail, we're covered with leeches, we're bleeding, we want to strangle each other. That's when we decide if we're really courageous and we're committed to this finish line. So this first clip I'm going to share with you guys is our team in the jungle in Borneo, where the fun had stopped for us about, like, five days earlier. And we're racing Team Intersport, which is the top French team, and you'll sense that as a theme throughout this entire presentation. In these years, it was always us and Intersport at the front of the pack, and we had a really fun, friendly rivalry with these guys. So day five of this race, we go running into this caving section, and it appeared as though all we had to do was run into these caves, ascend up these ropes, run down this ridge line, jump on our boats, paddle 60 miles to the finish, and we're gonna win the Eco Challenge. Woohoo! Well, not so fast. We go running into these caves, and incidentally, our first step in the caves, up over our knees, you guys. What's at the bottom of caves? Yeah, bat guano, bat poop, which has nothing to do with the story, just adds flavoring. <laughs> right? It's 120 degrees out, and this section was a hell of a lot longer than it looked on the map. And my feet are bleeding, I'm covered with leeches, I've been in the same Lycra outfit for five days. Totally dehydrated, because we're all out of water now, and I start to get to the end of my rope. And sometimes when girls get to the end of our ropes, we Cry, yeah. There were no shoe stores around. So there I am crying at the front of world championships. And my teammates are running down ahead, and now our competitors are running down the ridge line behind us. And I'm standing there dead still because I can't keep walking. I'm going to die. I can't see because I'm crying. And there's a 1,200 foot drop on both sides of this teeny tiny ridge line. And finally, Mike realizes I'm not down there with the rest of the team. And he starts trucking back up the ridge line. And I'm bracing for impact. And as he approached, I'll never forget what he said. He said, okay, Rob, um, I got a wife and a daughter, and I know that you people have to do this. <laughs> and they said, but there's a difference between people that are going to win this race and people that are going to lose. And it's not that people that are going to win the Eco Challenge aren't crying. It's just that people that are about to win this race are crying. And then he grabbed my hand and said, and they're walking. <laughs> Bless his heart, he held my hand. We all held each other's hands as we cried and stumbled and made our way down that ridge line the next several hours. And I realized the man is right. You know, being courageous doesn't mean you don't have a hard time. You know, being courageous means that you cry as long as you keep walking, right? So here's a quick little clip in Borneo. On the ridge to Eton Peak, the lead teams are learning that things are not always as they seem. There's a fake, false summit. It'll be soul destroying when they get there and realize they've only gone a third of the way and now they need to descend and climb higher and higher than ever before. It just takes such courage to overcome the expectation of something being easy and then to find out it's really, really hard. That's what Eco Challenge is all about though. Digging deep in your soul and keeping going. It's a race about character. To dig down that deep with three other people 
and to have them love you and support you when you're nasty and disgusting and you're crying or you're scared, knowing that your four hearts and your four minds are one heart and one mind is such a bonding experience. Can I get an amen on the leopard skin lycra? <laughs> amen, brothers. <laughs>